Hello guys, my name is Simgad, and we are here today with the WZ Triple One Model One Slash Four review. This tank is a Chinese Tier Nine heavy tank, and this tank is pretty much a more mobile version of the E75. It's like a medium tank playstyle E75, and with other words, a great freaking tank. Like I really love this tank. I'm still debating them. If I'm gonna keep it or not, but for now I love it. Like I, I'm gonna keep it as long as I can because I don't have the money to buy the 113. Like I'm, I unlock the 113, but I have Sandy, not the money to buy it. So yeah, I still need four million for that. So it's gonna take some time until I have that. So stats: this tank has 1,850 hit points. It's below average with the other. Tier 9 heavy tanks have, like the ST1 or the VK. But like I told you guys, the triple one is more of a medium kind of playstyle tank, so I can I can understand that this tank has a little a bit of a bit of less hit points. This tank weighs 45 tons, with other words, do not fucking ram nobody. <laughs> because they weigh way, way more than you. Look at that. If you ram the VK, you're dead. You're just dead. You're gonna be a pancake after you do that. Never ram with this tank. Use your gun. Your gun is amazing. Just use that as your advantage. You have 600 horsepower, that's quite good, acceleration is normal. Um, normal to fast, it's not that fast, but it's normal. Normal fast kind of kind of way. Your speed limit is 50, so you pretty much have the same kind of speed limit as a 50B, if I'm correct. 50B has, I think 50 if I'm correct? 65 even, that's, that's, that's really, really OP. And the Amex has 51 or the FCM has 51 so yeah like you have really really fast top speed as you can see 50 that's a lot that's really a lot your reverse speed is 28 so it's not the best reverse speed but it's still normal your mobility will be good at most of the time but 28 is not really that great to turn around but it's well, it's, it's gonna be fast enough to do it your whole armor is 120 in the front 80 in the side and 60 in the back uh, and it's also very, very well angled, as you can see. It's pretty much like an IS-3, if I, if I would grab the IS-3 right here. And it has a pointy nose, as you can see. It's not a pointy nose as the IS-3 has, but it's still a pointy nose. Yeah, as you can see, IS-3 has a complete pointy nose. What does that do? It pretty much makes the armor, like, if you're going to side script with this tank, you're going to make people easier just to pen that. But if you freeze them frontally, they're going to have a hard time pinning you because then it's angled, as you can see. It's kind of the same deal for the triple one, um, except it's way, way, way less. So you don't need to worry about size scaling because you can actually do that quite well with this thing. I've done it many, many times, and it does work quite well. So, 230 turret armor in the front, 120 in the side, and 60 in the back. So it's pretty much like an American tank. It has a lot of frontal armor, but no side armor or rear armor. It has nothing. So you need to watch out for Ichi shots, because Ichi shots will do even more damage to you if they hit your back. They can put you on fire, or even worse, just kill your crew. And you don't, you do not want that. So just try to face your enemies frontally, and you're gonna have a good time because people do really have a hard time to pen you if you can cover up your lower plates, because your uh, higher plates. Just look at that ankle. That's like freaking seventy. That's like seventy percent or something. I'm not sure. Like it's if this is ninety, that's forty five percent even. Look at that. I think that's forty five percent. That's crazy how much that actually is. That's it's really really good angle. You can really use your armor to your advantage with this tank if you get held down. It's like an I seven in a way, or an SC one. SC one not really SC one because the SC one you can actually pen right here, but it's more of an I seven because if you get held down. It's pretty much unpenable from there. Like, it's pretty much the same deal. It's like an IS-3, as you can see. Same pointy nose right there. If you can get held down, uh, good luck freaking penning the IS-7, because it's it's going to be a hard time to actually do that. So, that's pretty much the armor. Let's go over to the gun. The gun. It's a 130mm gun with a rate of fire of 4 rounds, points 29 per minute. That is just crazy. That is like way, way faster than the E-75. And the E-75 is pretty much the same gun as this tank. As you can see, let me grab that tank real fast. 
the guns are pretty much equal, except the rate of fire is just way, way better. You have 244 penetration with normal shots, 340 with heat, uh, and your average damage is 490. So the same average damage as the E-25, except you have less accuracy and way, way more rounds per minute. Your reload time is around 12 seconds, if I'm correct. Something around 12 seconds. 12.08, 12 12 if I'm correct. So it's really, really fast for this kind of damage and penetration. Your third traverse speed is 26. Um, that is quite, that's quite good. The combination between 28 traverse speed and 26 third traverse speed. So that is quite well. You can turn around quite well if you turn your tank and you turn it at the same time. If you get flanked or something like that, or you have a scout running around you, does and does annoying things. Uh, you also have 400 fuel range and 750 single range, so that's quite well. SC1 has 380, but Russian tanks have way way less fuel range. As you can see, most of them have way less fuel range than you should expect. Like there you go, German tanks have and like even Fosh. Even Fosh actually has 390, I'm surprised about that. But most of the, tank, most of the tier 9 tanks have around 300, 390 or 400 fuel range. So the equipment that I use on this tank is vertical stabilizer, gun rammer, and again, gun lane drive. Those are the things that I like. Why do I use a vertical stabilizer and a gun, and plus the engaged gun lane drive? Because your aiming time is terrible, and you want to reduce that as hard as you can. So putting on vertical stabilizer and engaged gun lane drive is a big, big plus point. And of course you need freaking gun rammer because it's a gun rammer. You need that everywhere. As you can see, you need that everywhere. You need that everywhere. The first thing you buy is a freaking gun rammer. Remember that, guys. The first thing you buy is a gun rammer for every new tank you buy. So yeah, that's pretty much the tank stats. So let's go over to some games. I have three games ready. So let's go over to the first game. So here is the first replay, and as you can see, we are playing the Malinovka. It's an encounter battle. Um, Malinovka is improved, like really improved. I enjoy this map actually more than I used to enjoy. I used to I I used to hate this uh, hate this map, not tank. <laughs> a map is not a tank thing. Just saying. But yeah, I used to hate this map. It was not one of my favorite maps. This map was just terrible. It was just snipe versus snipe, camp versus camp. It was boring. Not fun to do. And it I just wanted to be over as fast as possible. But they've changed the map. And I actually do enjoy the map more than I used to do. So the first, like, the matchup seems to be a right tier 10 matchup. Hey, what can you do about it? You cannot always be lucky, but it's a good matchup, so I, I can live with this. The first target, Amex 3090. I'll take one little snapshot. Kaboom! And he is dead. Poor little guy. Did not even spot that well that game. So yeah, the first kill, 465 damage. Not even my above my normal, but he didn't have that HP to actually get my above. Uh, to get my normal average damage. So yeah, in this position, guys, where I'm going in right now, it's a powerful position right here. It's a really, really powerful position, right? Like around here, because your lower plate will be covered, and they will be they will be only seeing your turret plus your frontal plate. This position is good if you have a lot of frontal armor, and at I use I use this spot a lot because I know I can do a lot from this position right here. So an E5, Object, I7, and SD1. Horrible, horrible tanks. And an E75 that is actually stuck. Not even sure why I did not aim for him because his turret is stuck so it means I can pen it with the first. I can just go through his turret armor like it's nothing yet. There you go. First shot on my frontal. No, actually in my turret, right in my turret, did not pen. And yeah, at this point I didn't really realize that the E-75 does not have the top turret, so it's easy to pen. But I do take a, a nice little shot into that E-5, tracking him and doing damage at the same time. And this is the good part about this tank. You do two shots and it's 1k damage. As simple as that. That's why I love this tank so much. I'm still, I'm still considering about s selling in this tank, because like I like it. 
But I know I'm not gonna be playing this because I don't play tier 9s often. So I'm still debating on if I'm gonna going to keep it or not. So yeah, at this point I realize that this e Easy 5 does not have the top turret. So I put a nice little shot at him doing 613 damage, way, way above my average. And yeah, there you go, 4 shots, 2k damage. Really, really powerful, powerful tank. And yeah, that, like, there you go. I bounce once again on my frontal plates. It's really, really hard to pen this tank if you get the lower plate down. It's the same kind of deal as the IS-7. If you can get the lower plate down, you're gonna have a hard freaking time trying to pen an e uh, IS-7 frontally. You're gonna really have a really, really bad time. I just hope you have some gold load if, if you meet one of the IS-7s. But if you have his lower plates, he is fucked. As simple as that. Same thing for this tank. If you show the lower plates, people will just kill you like you're nothing. But if if, if you don't show your lower plates, you're gonna have a good time. Simple as that. Like I'm having right now. So yeah, 3k damage with 6 shots. I'm doing quite well. Put a nice little shot into the ice 8, doing 571 damage. And he bounces once again. He bounced already twice on me. I still t took no damage whatsoever because people are shooting me or in the turret or my frontal plate. And as you can see, my frontal plate is really, really good angled. And yeah, there you go. Ice 8 is pretty much dead. Pretty much everybody up here is dead. We destroyed them completely. So it, as you can see, 9 shots, 4.2k damage. We are doing good so far. No damage taken. We received some shots, but they did no damage. They did not even track us. So we're doing terrific anti moment. So we are pushing down. And an I say to get spotted, but I think he's not even I think he's or a bot or something else. And yeah, there we go. The first shot we received is of course from the scumbag player because scumbags for the win. With a big freaking shot into me. I see this is nine, I aim for him, I shoot, I pen and do four hundred and seventeen damage. Way, way, way below my average, sadly. So yeah, I, our team pretty much destroyed the hill, like, uh, how to play this map, like, how I play this map is, uh, if I have the hill, from the hill I can do a lot, I can push down any enemies, like, the way to do this is just have a team camping right here, and have a team pushing this way, and if you can secure the hill, and you can push down, you have the game, simple as that, that's how I usually play this map. So 50B, shot me once, bounced miss me and I understand he's like so some, there somewhere I he gets spotted and I'm like okay I can give them give him a nice little shot in his face but unlucky he gets killed before that but out of nothing already gets spotted I'm like payback payback and of course of course did you guys see that he turned around for the water oh, oh what a scumbag <laughs> what a freaking scumbag so that was your first replay let's go over to the after battle re reports so here's the after battle report. As you can see, I got a Sanker, High Caliber, and Confederates. Really, really good game. 6,000 damage, 16 shots, 16 direct hits, and 14 penetrations. I bounced twice, but with 14 penetrating shots, I did 6,045 damage. I received 9 hits. Uh, two of them were penetrations. One of them was an arty. And the other one was, I'm not sure what, I didn't really see it. And the other seven shots, I bounced completely off. And I also blocked 1,840 HP by my armor. I damaged seven vehicles and destroyed three. And also got 785 damage upon detecting. So as you, as you guys saw that replay, just play the sank aggressive. Don't be scared. If you play this tank aggressive, you you need to be first line. You cannot be second line with this tank. You need to be first line because your accuracy fucking sucks. You need to be f first one in line, just covering, side escaping, whatever you can do, just to survive. Just don't be sniping. Don't be sniping. That's my advice. Never freaking snipe because it's gonna be more of a. Are you gonna be lucky or not? Simple as that. And yeah, I was applied my ammo and as you can see pretty much every shot casts around 1k so it's a bit pricey but if you have premium pre premium um, premium days you can easily afford it and yeah I also made a profit of 30k that game so yeah that was the first game let's go over to the second game 
So here is the second game. I'm playing on Redshire, and again, it's an encounter battle. Like I'm been enjoying encounter battle, encounter mode a lot because it's fun. Like you only have one cap, so your team and the enemy team need to get that. So you don't have the retarded caps like you have in like in normal mode. You sometimes just freaking scouts just go into the cap and then they just win the game. Like, it's boring. Like, I don't like that. I've That happened to me a couple of times. I really hate it. In Counter, you don't really have that, because it's pretty much one base, and you, you need to defend it. You really need to defend it. So, I'm going to this position. Why am I going to this position? Because you have a rock here, and you can be held down, and I like that. I really, really like that in this tank. So the first target I see is the T-54. I put in shot at him, but I get unlucky and bounce. Then I look at my map and I see there is pretty much nobody but around me. It's just me chillaxing here by myself. I'm waiting for the Canarvan to push up with me. So I'm just waiting for him right now. I put a nice shot in D54 and I track him. He repairs his track and then he bounces on my frontal plates. T32 started to push up as well. Feeling brave I see. I straight a shot at him. He does not pen me but I do pen him and do 500 damage to him. D54 tries to Go and flank me, but no luck. I turn around and go completely for him as well. There we go. I bounced Sandy because he angled at the last point. So, I have the rock now. Uh, the rock, like, I, I like pushing from this rock because he can be a bit, a bit of aggressive. And he can be first line. And that's what's good about this tank. You need to be first line. You never be second line. So, Tiger P pens me, but... I pen him back and do way, way, way more damage than he did, he did to me. And don't be scared of trading shots with other tanks. Just don't trade shots with TDs. Like, don't trade shots with TDs. You can trade shots with medium tanks and heavies. Don't sit, also don't trade shots with autoloaders. Just don't. Don't do that. It's a waste of your time. But, like, normal tanks, you're gonna easily trade shots with them because they will have way, 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 way less damage then you can do to them. So your trade is gonna be quite great. As you guys saw. T54 penned me two times and I pretty much killed him. Tiger P penned me once and I pretty much killed him. Like if you're fighting against an E25 or a triple one, do not trade shots with them because they're gonna they're gonna break you. They're gonna completely break you. Like I'm doing to these guys right now. So we pretty much have this side, we just need to kill the 103 Black Prince and the D32, and then we can push up from there. So at the moment, I'm just waiting for them not to aim at me, and then I can come out. But I realize then that they're not going to, going to do that. They're aiming for me. He shoots, bounces my frontal plate, and I put a nice shot into the Black Prince, doing 446 damage. Then the 103 starts to feel brave, so I, I was like, okay, I can maybe kill him. If I have the shot or the opportunity, but then I see D32, his side, and I'm like, oh, I need to take the opportunity to shoot him right now. But, as you guys saw, I got tracked, and I need to use my large barricade because he came back and he was going to retract me again, then you would have the endless tracking progress that is so annoying. But I repaired, wasted 20k on my large barricade, but got safely out and pretty much destroyed this whole side, doing 5.3k damage. And yeah, it's a really fast game, this one, like, just play to stay aggressive, don't be scared. Just don't go into spots so you know you're not going to survive. Go into spots so you know you're going to survive because you have some backup or you know the t territory around you quite well. You know how to angle, you know how to use the environment around you, and if you have that, if you know how to do that, then you're going to have a great, great time with this tank. So T30. Uh, KB5 and T54E1 are camping, but they're behind the house. I put a nice shot on the KB5, get lucky with my sniping there, and do pen and do 500 any damage. D30 and KB5 are camping, but our team is camping at the same time, so there nobody's pretty much camping right there. And yet, I put a nice shot into the T30 and he gets killed, and... Like, we pretty much destroyed our team, I'm not gonna lie. We pretty much destroyed our team. Like, it's 12 to 0 right now. They just got schooled. They just got completely schooled. Completely freaking schooled. But their team wasn't that really good, as you can see. Their team was normal. Yellow and green. 
some good players. They had some tomatoes, but like, to be honest, I just had a great game on the right side, and I pretty much destroyed from from there. We pretty much won the game. Sadly, the AMX 50 100 dies and does not give us the clean win. Ah, god damn it, 50 100s ruin it for everybody. So yeah, only an object for 16 left, and that will be it. And he's an E1, E2 somewhere. I'm pre-aiming at the spot where he was in, but he's not there. He's an A4 going after that Waffle Tracker. I track the object, sadly, doing no damage, but I do get some uh, tracking damage or spawning damage. I'm not sure what it is. Assistance damage, I guess. I think it's assist assist assistance damage. But yeah, that was the second game. Let's go over to the after battle reports. So here are the after battle reports. As you can see, I got Ace Sanker, High Caliber, Steel Wall, and Confederate. A really, really good game right there. Uh, I got also 1,367 base XP. I fired 16 times, hit 16 times, and penetrated 14 times. I bounced 2 times, sadly. But with the 14 penetrating shots, I did 6,336 damage. I received 14 hits. Seven of them were penetrations, and seven of them were not penetrations. And I blocked 2,020 HP by my armor. So, as you can see, like the armor, if you face it frontally to your enemy, you're going to bounce a lot of shots. If you know how to anger your tank, you're going to bounce a lot of shots. Simple as that. This tank is good frontally, but side and back is just horrible. So, watch out for tanks with each chi. Like, watch out for that, that have like above 60 pen with each chi. Because those tanks can do a lot, a lot of damage to you if they get your back. So you need to watch out for that, but if you can just show your frontal armor, you're going to bounce a lot, of, a lot of shots if you know how to angle. And let's take a look at the detail report. And again, I didn't really make made much money, but 27k is still quite good. 20k for the lower trip parakeets, 17k for the shots that I fired, and then you also have the repair. The repair is quite pricey, I'm going to admit that. 15k, that's a lot of money for just repairing the tank. But yeah, that was the second game. Uh, let's go over to the third replay that I have ready. So here is the third replay, and as you can see, I'm playing on airfields, and it's a standard battle. We don't really have much chance to win, but I never give up hope that fast, so I just went for it and hope to just get as much damage as I could. So airfields, how do we play this map? How do I play this map? Most of the time, I go to the positions on top here. Right here, this is the first position if I get spawned up there, and if I get spawned up here, I go up here. Why do I do that? Because you pretty much have sight over everything. You can shoot down here, you can shoot down there, you can shoot down here, you can shoot down there, you can shoot everywhere from this position. And that's why I love this kind of positions where you can just have the control pretty much over the whole map. So the first thing I do is try to spot upcoming enemies true here. Sometimes people cross this and if you can spot them in time you can do some easy, easy damage. So at first I don't really see somebody so I'm just taking my time, relaxing, no point of pushing in, dying immediately in the first minutes of the game. So I'm just relaxing, taking my time, seeing if somebody's gonna pop up or not. I'm also playing with Luisa Creek. Uh, he's playing with the Centurion 7 slash 1. Great tank, really great tank. Uh, also, you have the choice in that saying between 20 pounder and the 105. I'm not sure which gun, which gun you guys like more, the 105 or the 20 pounder, but I actually like the 105 more. Like the DPM was t so much better with the 20 pounder. I'm gonna give you that. But still, just having that 400 damage or 390 average damage every shot was just, I loved it. I really did love it. So the first shot goes into the AMX 3090 doing 500 entry damage to him. And I'm again almost reloaded and ready for the next shot. So right now I'm just like checking if I can actually hit the liver. He, I have a little shot on him, but he goes back, sadly. And the split up actually, um, how our team split up was actually quite well. They all, there's some tanks went middle, some tanks went right side, some tanks went this side. And the scouts went up here. So yeah, first shot goes in the IS-7. I do not pen him, sadly. Uh, a bit of unlucky. He was angled. I was going for the strangs there, but it didn't really work out for me. 
So you have big targets here, two IS-7s and an E-75. You also have the Death Star in the back with the Canarvin. Big, big targets, especially that Death Star. So the first thing I'm if I aim for is the Death Star. I wanna have I wanna have him out of the game as fast as I can. So you put two shots into him, me and the IS-7, and he's now a one shot and not a big threat anymore. Also, guys, try to aim for targets that are big threats, like the Death Star, because just fuck that tank. <laughs> I'm gonna be completely honest, I hate leading that tank in the enemy team because that tank can one-shot me. One-shot a freaking turn 9 tank and it's annoying, you don't really want that. Usually 5 gets tracked and I can see his lower plate, I put, in, I put a nice shot into his lower plate doing 510 damage. And our i7 is sadly dying because he's playing a bit, bit, bit too, aggress too aggressive right now. I see the Carnarvon right there. I put a shot at him, but no luck. It goes into his track and does no damage. The I-7 actually finally realizes that and he has no HP. He starts falling back. That's good of him. I like that he actually did that. Then a Tiger 2 gets spotted, so I was like, okay, new target. Let's aim for him. Put a shot at him, but no luck. I think the shot went up to these lower, uh, higher plates and it just bounced off, sadly. So I turn my tank around just... To, if they spot me, they can shoot my frontal plate and now my back. And a Wolf Tracker gets spotted, and I just aim, hope for my luck, and it actually works out. I do 534 damage for him. To him, not for him, to him. So yeah, right now, our team is actually having the upper hands here. It's 6 to 3, we killed way more targets, also more dangerous targets. We killed the Death Star, we killed the Eastern 5 Eastern 5 great tank, I will be buying that tank back because it was a great tank and I want to make a review around it because like having a good game in Eastern 5 is just way 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 too easy. There we go, nice shot into the Tiger 2 doing 476 damage. I aim for his last location just to get another shot going just to get the kill. But a shot but unlucky he actually moves and I do not hit him sadly. So I re-aim and get ready for to actually kill steal him but no luck Blue Street kills him right on time. So, enemy team. Went completely back, went Rambo mode, and there's back 7-7. Seven seven. But our team is not giving up, and we are, are actually still winning this so far. And Knarvin's... I don't know what he did. He wanted to, like, flank, I guess, the Leopard. He did that, but he is going to die. Like, never try to flank if you don't have much HP going for yourself. It's just a bad thing to do. So most of our short tents are dead, we only have a T-62A and an E-100. T-62A is dead, and now we only have an E-100. They still have three IS-7s and a T-95 that is camping in base. I'm just trying to get a shot into T-95, I aim for his back. No luck, shot does not hit him. So, at this moment I was like, well, fuck it. Uh, three IS-7s, I do not want to risk losing this. So I'm going to go full scumbag mode and just pam that money. There we go. A nice shot into, into the IS-7, doing 494 damage to him. I know it was, it is, and it always will be a scumbag mood spamming my golds. But at this point, I just wanted to secure it. We had this win. And there we go. Another a nice shot into the IS-7, doing 431 damage to him. Like, I really did not want to spam gold, but I needed to win this game because I realized that my team was losing. And I pretty much only had tomatoes left. Like, E100 played well, he had 4 kills. But still, like, we could still lose this. So I was like, just making sure we could win this game, so I just went full heat mode. I only have 7 heat shots, so I didn't really spam my heat completely. Killed the IS-7. Now aiming for the AMX, trying to get a shot into him. Shoot, get unlucky, and a miss. And there you go, 121 meters. And I have problems hitting that little guy, because the accuracy on this tank is 0 0.4, or dispersion, whatever you want to say. I aim once again, hope to hit, and this time, I actually do hit. So, once again, we are winning this game, but we can still lose this, because they have two I-7s, and one T-95. And also a little freaking scumbag, but I, I don't want to talk about him, because he's a freaking scumbag. <laughs> so our Leopard is a one-shot for the I-7s. Our E100 is not really doing much. He's a one-shot. 
our art is still alive and our AMX is not even playing the game. So my hopes are really low at the moment because I want to win this game, but it's not going to happen when pretty much everybody is a one shot or AFK. I'm still full HP. Why? Because I pretty much camped my whole game up here. I camped, but I also got a great result from camping this little side. I got 4k damage with 9 shots. So at the moment, I'm just waiting for that push from, from the I-7s so I can actually get some damage going. So I go around the corner, don't spot them. I spot the I-7. He's completely full HP and I'm like, well, shite. We lost the game. It's done. He's full HP, but Leopard puts a nice shot at him. I go back into him because I know I can shoot and fall back in time. I put another another heat shot into him, doing 521 damage to him, but I do get Amorect for it. So a big price paid there. But the good thing is, now the full HP I-7 is a low HP I-7. So, like, at the moment, they're both scared to push up the I-7. Kills the leopard and now only have they only have me. Not more than that. I'm not even joking. They only have me. Amex is not playing. Artie is I think he's playing. I hope he's playing. <laughs> I just hope he's playing and my platoon platoon mate is hoping that I'm actually gonna win this game. At this point I was like, well, fuck it. At least let me just try to get as much damage as I can before I die miserably getting raided by two I sevens. So the I seven pushes up. He puts a nice shot into me, into me, but I don't really put a shot into him. I bounce that shot, and I realize I ain't gonna survive this if I stay up here. I was like, well, shit. I, I'm just gonna go and stand as long as I can and wait for them to push up to me. Then I'm gonna f try to fall back so the arty has clean shots on those guys. That was my plan at that point. But I didn't know like how I did not die at this point because there's a T95 right there somewhere, not even aiming for me. Like I just don't get this. If he would be aiming, I'll be dead in no time. And that was he. That was his mistake, pretty much. That that was T95's mistake that they actually that he actually did not kill me at that point. Because if he would kill me, the game would be over and they would win the game. But no, 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 no. Tim does not give up that fast. So I wait for the I7s to come rush into me completely. First I-7 goes in, and second one goes frontally. I see him first, and I understand he's going to kill me, so I put a shot into him. The other I-7 goes down, dies, <laughs> and I'm like, shite, 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 reloads, already freaking hits, and I'm like, hit, hit him, and I track him, <laughs> and kill him right on time. <laughs> that was, wow, and I'm like, well, we won the game now. <laughs> Completely won the game right there. So there's only a T95 left and a GW Tiger, and I realized that. So I'm like, Artie can be still be playing. He got one kill, so I'm like, well, fuck it. Let me just not go the same way where T95 can be aiming. So I just go around and go that way, where I actually can go and flank them around, so I can get some back shots on the T95. And just wow, like. Artie, you are my hero. He saved me. I thought he was AFK. That guy just saved me. Like, he just... That guy saved me. Like, thank you, Artie. Thank you, scumbag, for being a scumbag at that point. Because, like, even if the I-7, like, if he not... If not, if the Artie did not shoot me, there was still a chance I would win against the I-7 because he did track me, but he does have a faster reload time than me, so he could still win against me if he could, like, bounce, if he could pen me the second shot. But if he could not pen me the second shot, I would probably kill him and still win the game. But yeah, already helped me out completely win this game. So yeah, at, th at this point, I'm taking things slow because I do want to win. I really want to win because the game has been going so good so far. I don't want to fuck this up. So I just go completely around just to make sure... I have spotted everything before I go in into their base. The first things I'm aiming for is the B, B9, B0 points where an RD can be. I'm aiming for that, but it doesn't look like the RD is actually on that point. So 1395, th it was it was a normal player. Like it was a good player, 14k games. I was actually expecting him to be a bit more aggressive at the last kind of minutes, but he didn't really do that, and he kind of camped the whole whole time. 
in the back. Like, I understand you have a T95. It does not equally mean that you just need to fucking cam the base. Like, it's just saying <laughs> you can be a bit more aggressive with your T95 like I did. I was actually quite aggressive with my T95. I didn't give a shit. I was like, well, let's, let's go in and hope for the best. <laughs> That's how I played. So, yeah, I just go to the last position where the T95 was to see if he's st still there or he pushed up. But no, 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 no. He is still freaking here. And I avenge my platoon mates. And he gets killed out of nowhere. I spot the art. I'm like, well, you're fucked, sir. You are fucked. I aim for him. And do the finishing blow. Bam. Five kills. Not a time gun. But still a great, great game. So this was the third replay. Let's go over to the after band reports. So here is the after band report. As you can see... I had an amazing, amazing game. Ace Sanker, High Caliber, Confederate, and 2.1k XP. 1,445 base XP, 6,240 damage, 24 shots fired, 21 hits, missed 3 times, and bounced 5 freaking times. I didn't really aim my shots well, but I saw with the 16 penetration shots, I did 6,240 damage. I received eight hits, eight of them no, five of them were penetrations and three of them were not penetrations. And with those three non penetrations I blocked nine hundred and eighty damage. I also got one thousand one hundred and sixty eight damage upon detecting. And I also have traveled three kilometers. That's a bit crazy, three kilometers right there. But yeah, in general, that game was just epic. That game I really enjoyed playing that game. Like when I survived against that I seven, I was like I jumped out of my chair on the live stream. I'm not joking. I jumped out of my freaking chair. I sadly I do not have the uh, highlights where that happened because I forgot about that because my brain is a pinda. Sadly, like I don't remember stuff. But like I was just surprised that I actually did survive that engagement against those two I sevens. But yeah, that was the triple one review. If you did enjoy the review, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment. But as usual, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.